guys, it's Brian at Sami Up Designs. So before we start the video on the CB750, I want to take a second and just tell you guys thank you so much. We just crossed 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and it's just a great feeling. Uh, to, to realize that there's a thousand people out there that like my content, whether it's sign stuff or motorcycle stuff, just thank you so much. It just means really the world to me, it really does. So that being said, I, I want some feedback. What do you guys want to see more of? Do you want to see motorcycle stuff? Do you want to see sign stuff? Do you want to see graphic design? What do you want to see? Now that I have a, a little bit larger of an audience, I, I want to give back to you guys as well. So I'm going to be giving away a few hats and a few shirts and some stickers. And I'll be doing that here pretty soon once I get my community tab on YouTube. So stay tuned, look for that tab, look for the post. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe and check a little bell if you want to. That'll tell you when I post something new. So that might be the key to getting a shirt or a hat or a sticker. So thank you guys so much for the support. Now here's a video on the CB750. Hey guys, it's Brian at Sign Me Up Designs again, and today I'm going to be doing some work to my 1980 Honda CB750. Okay, a few quick facts about this bike. It is a 1980 CB750C, which is the custom version, so it has the dual overhead cam, 750cc engine. These things were mass produced back in the 80s, but as you can tell, it's been highly modified and it doesn't look anything like it did when it came off the factory line in 1980. So the reason I've named this thing Lucky 7 is because obviously it's a CB750. It took me seven years to complete it. I just completed it last year to this point at least. And I bought it for $700 as a non-running bike seven years ago. But one thing I didn't do that I've been meaning to do for a while is to change this back tire. Now this is a 260 millimeter back tire width wise. And there's some issues that I ran into as I ran this tire. So before we get into all that, I'm gonna give you a little bit more information about the bike. So the engine and the frame are basically the only things that are still the factory CB750 and the gas tank. The gas tank's the original one that came with it whenever I bought it. Now what I've done and my vision for this whole project was to set it up as an old school cafe racer with modern sport bike styling. So if you guys are familiar with modern sport bikes, you know that a lot of them run the big wide wheels on the back and they stretch the swing arm out. So that's kind of the goal I had for this was to do a stretched out swing arm with a mono shock in the rear. And the front is actually a Hayabusa fork set from a, I think it's a 2004 Hayabusa. I can't remember. It's been so long. So a couple of reasons I went with the Hayabusa front fork set. The first one was to make the clearance for this Harley Davidson wheel. These are Harley Davidson wheels. They're the fat spoke, 60 spoke, fat spoke wheel for like a cruiser or something like that. It's a 21 inch front wheel and an 18 by 10 inch back wheel, which is advertised to take up to a 250 millimeter tire. So the mono shock is actually from a modern, I think 2006, seven ish CBR 1000R. It has a little nitrogen gas reservoir right here. And as you can see, I've shaved off the original spring mounts that were on the side. They were located on the side. They went down to the swing arm here. Now, speaking of swing arm, obviously you can tell that that's a little bit different as well. The only thing that's original is this pivot point right here. We actually bent some tubular steel and modified it to accept the bottom mount for the shock. Shout out to Fields and Andrew and No Luck Garage for helping me with this swing arm. Go follow No Luck Garage on Instagram. It's at No Luck Garage. And they also have a YouTube channel, but they never post. So Fields, come on, man. Let's get with it. Let's get some videos up. We want to see more cool stuff like this. And as you can see, we also did some under bracing as well, which kind of carries back around the whole frame of the bike. And it meets into this axle block that was made for a chopper or Harley Davidson or something like that. Well, obviously these CB750s don't come with a factory wheel this wide. So to make it work and keep the factory cover here, what I did was I actually took two sprockets. There's two drive sprockets in here and I shaved the teeth off the inner one and I welded the two sprockets together, which spaced it out just enough to where I make clearance for this back rim. Unfortunately, here's where the problem lies and the, the problem that I'm hoping to address today. So as you can see, the chain runs pretty true to the front sprocket. The only issue is I have just a little bit of clearance right here against this tire. If you look back here, the center of the tire isn't exactly center to the bike. I had to offset it a little bit just to make a little bit of chain clearance so the tire wouldn't rub the chain. Now the swing arm is true to the backside. The only issue is I had to offset the wheel to the right just a little bit. So my goal today is to run this tire 
which is a Pirelli 240, instead of this V-Rubber 260, which is on here right now. And my hope is by running this new tire is to fix two things. One, this tire isn't really that round. It's more of like an oval, and it doesn't really handle that well on the roads. So two birds with one stone. I'm going to make clearance for the chain, and I'm actually gonna get a nicer tire that has a little bit more of a curve to it. So that's basically a rundown of this bike. Let me know down in the comments what you like, what you don't like, what you'd have done differently. Let me know. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and run a time lapse. We're gonna get this rear tire off the back and take it and get the tire changed. We got this thing mounted up and ready to roll. As you can see, we've got a lot nicer of a profile for the rear tire now instead of this flat thing right here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I do miss how wide the 260 was, and that's okay though, because I think we're gonna have a lot better results with this 240 over the 260. And you can also see how much better clearance we have for the chain now, so that chain's not gonna hit the tire, and we're gonna be able to mount this tire straight like it's supposed to be. So here it is back mounted on the bike and it is incredibly incredibly better as far as the profile it's way more round i mean i should be able to take corners a lot easier now and the chain is just almost dead straight on and also we got a little bit more clearance out of the tire here it's still kind of close but we definitely have way more clearance now than we did and we don't have to worry about the tire being off center don't really look so much at the middle of the paint i think that might be not quite centered but as far as center of the swing arm and just track straight, I mean, the thing is perfectly tracking straight now. All right, so that wraps it up for the rear tire. We're good to go on that. Now, the only other thing I need to do before I can drive this thing around with you guys is I have a, a small fuel leak at these carburetors. If you've ever messed with four carburetors on a four-cylinder motorcycle, you just know how much of a bear they are to kind of get right. So it is right, it runs, it, it cranks up just fine, but it does have a small fuel leak. So I have a tool coming in that should be able to help me fix that fuel leak. Uh, I'll take it off the bike and put it on the bench and we we'll, should be able to figure it out relatively easy. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I appreciate y'all watching and thanks again for 1,000 subscribers. You guys are so awesome. So stay tuned for more on this bike and other builds. If you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. It's the underscore Brian Rogers, where I usually post videos 
and pictures to Instagram before I post them to YouTube so you kind of have a heads up on what's coming up next. If you want any more information on any of these bikes that you see in the background, every one of them has a YouTube video on it, including the Sportster, the orange and black one that's got a full build series. So go back and watch it start to finish and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one.